stuff I do. Good evening. Could we ask everyone to take a seat, please? Good evening. I want to start by thanking all of you for being here tonight to celebrate and worship together. We welcome our families, board members, and guests, and especially the class of 2021, who are celebrating with us virtually through the live stream. Today, as we enter into the Ignatian year, we mark the 500th anniversary of the battlefield injury that sparked the conversion of St. Ignatius Loyola. And we remember that greatest stories often begin in hardship. This has been a year filled with challenge. There is no denying that. But there is also no denying the incredible strength, fortitude, and maturity you, members of the class of 2021, have shown. And there's no denying that the sheer sense of joy we feel to be gathered here tonight. As president, I make it a point to ask students at graduation mass to look around and feel the power in the room. So gentlemen, look around. This night is different. We aren't in the cathedral, but on the very campus where your journey began. I want you to think about the power made manifest by the love and support of all the people who have accompanied you on your journey. Your parents, your guardians, family, and friends who are with us tonight, and those who cannot be or those who join us virtually. The teachers, the coaches, the moderators, the counselors, and mentors who have guided you and helped you grow into the young men you are today. I ask that you say a prayer of thanks for these people and the roles that they have played in your lives, the sacrifices they have made to get you to this moment. And in turn, we will say a prayer of gratitude for you because you have made every step on this journey worthwhile. We are so very proud of the men you have become, men for and with others committed to a faith that does justice. Tonight, I feel a different power, and it is the power of your presence in this place that has meant so much to you. You have practiced, struggled, and triumphed, triumphed on this very turf beneath your feet. You have shared moments of laughter and companionship in Hunter Fahey and the Hajar Dining Hall before you. You have acted, sung, and performed in Bulger Theater displayed your artwork in Cadogan Hall, and celebrated countless events, masses, and games on Cotter Field. All of these memories, powerful and wonderful, are a part of your forever. You are a part of this place forever, too. Class of 2021, you, perhaps more than any other group of students since the Second World War, know the true meaning of community. Because when we left this campus last March, you took BC High with you. And through this year of connected learning, even on the days when you weren't on campus, you were experiencing BC High. On Saturday, you will leave Morrissey Boulevard, again, going forth to put your education to work, your Jesuit education. You will serve, you will lead, and you will strive to make a difference in the lives of others. I pray, and I know, we have fostered in the youth the skills, talents, and faith to change the world. And in doing that, you will realize that BC High will be with you always as you join the brotherhood of over 15,000 alumni. With the sun beginning to set on this campus, just as it is setting on your journey here, I want you to think of this celebration as a missioning mass for your work. We are all here together, praying for you and with you. Graduation is not an ending. In being missioned, your work is just beginning. We are not saying goodbye. You will always have a home at BC High and with the people here tonight. So when the load becomes too heavy, 
or you find yourself questioning your journey, or you just need a moment of rest, come back home to BC High. We will welcome you and pray with you, just as we are doing tonight. And we will do everything in our power to help you set the world on fire. Thank you, and God bless the class of 2021. Please rise as we center ourselves in this sacred space. say at the beginning congratulations to the class of 2021 let's begin our prayer tonight in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you Dear Spirit. as we gather to pray we call to mind our faults and failings and we now ask the Lord for his pardon Who was sent to heal the contrite of heart? Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts, that he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will. Through us, Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God, 
as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for the light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Watch carefully then how you live, not as foolish persons, but wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. Be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks always and for everything. In the name of our Lord Je Jesus Christ, to God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks. God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them, whatever you did for one of these least sisters or brothers of mine, you did for me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Well, this is a great honor to be invited to preside at your baccalaureate graduation mass and to give the homily with all these outstanding scholars sitting behind me here. I did have this honor several years ago for the class of 2010. It was held in the cathedral in Boston. It was also my golden jubilee from BC High, the class of 1960, which, if you don't know your math, it was in the last century. I have heard many baccalaureate homilies and commencement addresses, and usually they all said that there is life after grammar school, high school, college, and university. It's easy to say. But I would like to do, what I would like to do is talk with the alums years later and ask them what they remember. What did they hear when they were at their baccalaureate? I imagine I would hear, hmm, and then I would say, well, who gave the homily? And I'd get another, hmm. Well, you may not remember my name or anything I say. And you know, that's quite all right, because what I am saying and what others will say as you go through your graduation rituals will only kick in with reflection over the years how you will live your lives after BC High will depend on your having absorbed what your parents taught you in the Ignatian principles of prayer, reflection, discernment, and action you were taught here at BC High. How you live your lives will involve of letting go of the things that no longer apply and being open to the new things that will guide you on your life's journey. Today actually is a big anniversary in the Society of Jesus. We call it Ignatius's cannonball experience. Historically, it seems that 500 years ago, on May 20th, 1521, Ignatius was fighting a war in Pamplona, Spain, and he got hit by a cannonball. It broke his knee and his leg. And it was from that moment on that he began to think there are other things to do in this life besides being a knight in shining armor and getting shot at and potentially killed. So he went on from there, had a huge conversion. And now the Jesuit order is 480 years old and prayer and reflection got us where we are today. Well, maybe a little politicking, too, with the authorities. We've been teaching our students the process of living a life focused on God and in harmony with God's people and all of creation. And that's what we hope you do in 
in order to have a balanced life of faith and good works. If you learned it, then we have done what God put us Jesuits here to do. And you know, it's not much different than what St. Paul went through each time he left the community and moved on. You heard the story in the first reading about his pleading with the Ephesians to stick to what he taught them and know that the Lord is with them. He hoped they had absorbed the word of the Lord. He wanted them to remember, to reflect on who they are and what they can do in God's spirit. Your teachers, administrators, and the Jesuit community at BC High hope you do the same. In our faith life, we are surrounded by the readings of the new community following the resurrection and ascension of the Lord. The new community was somewhat fearful because Jesus was going to leave them, and they did not yet understand that he wasn't going to be absent from them, but be with them in a new way. This Sunday, we celebrate that new way, the coming of the Holy Spirit and the fullness of God in the faithful followers. Jesus prayed over them and begged the Father to keep them united in love, just as he and the Father are one. Jesus prayed for us, for you and for me, to be able to carry on the works of God as Jesus did the work of the Father. We know that it wasn't easy for Jesus, even though the Father's work was being done. So how will it be for us? There are moments when it will go well. There are moments when it will all be horribly difficult. We recoil at the problem sometime and wish for the good old days when we didn't have to make decisions. It was easier when others told us what to do and we could remain relatively stress-free. But that way of living is for children, not educated adults, as you are becoming. As much as I can't believe that I am 60 years out of BC High, I have to. And I have to move forward, and so do you. What helps? Remember those words about reflection and discernment? Well, reflect on who you are. A human being, a son, perhaps a baptized son of God, sealed with the Holy Spirit at your baptism. That sacrament which made us members of the body of Christ and sharers in the life and mission of Jesus also committed us to the work of transforming the world and all its social structures. At baptism, we were anointed priest, prophet, and king. As priest, we are consecrated to mediating the life of God to others in our community. As prophet, we are dedicated to bearing witness to Jesus as his body on earth. As king, we are mandated to go out to all the world and renew the face of the earth. Renewing the earth means not only to get ourselves and others to heaven, but also to save institutions and activities from their bondage to darkness and sin. It means to renew family and social life, business and politics. Our mission is to bring everything in heaven and on earth together in unity under Christ's leadership. Each one of you has different gifts. Each one of you is heading in a different direction, even though some of you may be in the same college. I think I read you are headed to over 200 colleges, 21 of them being Jesuit colleges. And I also learned today that more than 20 of you are going to Boston College. So you're on your way to becoming a double eagle. And then you stay at Boston College and get a graduate degree so that you become, like me, a triple eagle. That drives some people crazy when you say that. You'll all be spread across the country, coast to coast. But this is a good thing because this world needs all those various gifts you have and will receive in order to renew all things in God. Whether you get involved in economics or business, social studies, social work, theology, philosophy, nursing, education, science, medicine, music, all those gifts need to be united to help the world be renewed. In this time of the pandemic, we need all those gifts more than ever to help humanity cope and survive in new ways. 
St. Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, to each individual, the manifestations of the Spirit is given for some benefit. You are filled with benefits. In fact, each one of you is a benefit. Remember who gave you those gifts? Reflect on God and on yourself. Develop those gifts so as to be able to use them in service to others. Discern the movements of your heart. Figure out if you can do what you think you can do. Find out what the world needs from you. I always tell students that the biggest question they need to discover and begin to answer is, who am I? One of the theology professors at Boston College in describing the vocation question has his students ask three questions. What am I good at? What does the world need? And overall, what gives me joy? How do you find out who you are? You listen, you read, you ask questions. You seek and search and study and pray. Yes, pray a lot. I have discovered that the more I get to know Jesus, the more I get to know who I am. The more I pray, the more open I am to hearing God's voice. The more I discover the Spirit of God in me, the more I find out what I am supposed to do. What Jesus asks of us is faithful stewardship, perseverance in the faith, and absolute love. It takes active participation in the praying community, who we are, that community established by Jesus. St. John has Jesus saying in his prayer to the Father, your word is truth. St. James wrote in a letter that we are to be doers of the word, not hearers only. Doing the word is speaking the truth. We can change the world. We can transform unjust structures. Standing up to evil and getting people clothed and fed is speaking the truth. As St. Matthew wrote in his gospel, feeding, clothing, visiting, caring for others is our task. Speaking truth to power, although difficult and sometimes death-dealing, is being Christ-like. There are many Jesuit brothers of mine who were brutally killed for speaking the truth. The martyrs of the university in San Salvador, the three religious women and missionary companion killed in El Salvador, St. Oscar Romero, all spoke truth to power. Truth is being heard in some quarters, but it will take more, including you, to proclaim it to the ends of the earth. Christ never promised us it would be easy, but he did promise us that he wouldn't be with us. In your search to answer the question, who am I? You can't help but find God there. If you were being honest, you will find God in all things and people. So fare well. Know that we are all part of the same community of love, no matter where we are on the face of the earth. Pray for each other, hope for each other, and above all, love each other. You learned a lot at home and at BC High, but there is more to learn, trust me. You can do it. You are loved and prayed for by Jesus and by the faith community. You are the Boston College High School class of 2021. You have left your mark on the spirit here. Knowing all that is great, but all you have to remember is that you are holy men for others. God is with you. So let us all stand together now and offer our special prayers. 
Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. The class of 2021, that we may continue to seek God in all things, in our academic pursuits, in our sports and activities, in our relationships with those we love and serve, and in one another. We pray that all we have devoted ourselves to in our time at BC High may continue to inspire and guide our lives, and that we strive to do all things ad maiorum de gloriam, for the greater glory of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ways we have been formed through our experiences in the classroom, the field in court, the stage, on retreat, and through service, may we always remember the passion we've been encouraged and habit and how people who've guided us have transformed our lives. May we remember the importance of being present, open, and loving. May we carry with us the friendships, heartaches, and moments with each other that were rich in spirit, full of hope, and demonstrated God's love. Help us to live our lives according to the gospel. Stand with those who are poor, marginalized, segregated, or have no one to speak on their behalf. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, nation, and world in this time of pandemic and protests, seeking an end to racial injustice. Our time at BCI has been upended by COVID, forged by a struggle against bias and hate, and given hope through a thirst for justice and equality. We pray for all members of our community who served on the front lines in the fight against COVID, who demonstrated amazing kindness by caring for each one of us, and who listened and brought peace to our lives. We pray that we too can be fearless leaders, kind neighbors, and peacemakers who fight for mercy, social justice, and racial change. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in the BCI community, including alumni and former faculty and staff who have passed away, are those who have faced a serious injury or illness. We specifically remember tonight those currently suffering from illness, especially Anatoly Berezuk and the mother of Joseph Cheris, and those who have died recently, Honor McDermott, the class of 2009, and the parents and siblings of the class of 2021 that are no longer here on earth but are present in spirit. The father of Mika Bach, the brother of Malik Freeman, the mother of Johnny Galeas, the mother of Ryan Haddad, the father of William Lee, the father of Max Mercer, the mother of Brian Miller, the father of Osasre Olabuja, the father of Tom Statham. We continue to remember and mourn our classmate, Matthew Roper, who passed away in February of 2020. We pray with his family on this day and take solace in the many ways we knew and love him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of generous parents, alumni, and benefactors who have made our education at BC High possible. We also give thanks for our families, teachers, mentors, classmates, friends, and all that have contributed to what we have received and experienced at BC High. May we live out their example as they've inspired us to be men and women with and for others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, we offer you all these prayers we speak and the prayers in our hearts. We thank you for all the graces and blessings that you have given us. We ask you to give us the strength, the faith, and the hope to share these gifts with all the world. 
We make these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and prayers be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight 
that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory. The Mystery of Faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope and sean our bishop all the clergy the women and men religious and all your people Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your, your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Ignatius, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. United as we are as the people of God, let us say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we invited here to share in this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. Only say the word. Thank you. 
Let us pray. 
May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, enlighten us by the instruction they bring and restore us through our participation in them that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you'd be seated again, please. I'd like to invite Khalil Cooper to come forward and share his post-communion reflection. Good evening, class of 2021, faculty, staff, parents, to the others here tonight to share this Mass and to share our accomplishments. A couple of weeks ago, Mr. Lewis came up to me in the cafe and told me about speaking during graduation Mass. At first, I was really scared. I thought I was in some serious trouble. But I was thrilled to learn that I was chosen to speak today, as this was something I've always wanted to do. Rest assured, however, I didn't realize the challenge of writing a good speech. There have been countless times where I'd write something down, thinking what I had was good, and then proceeding to erase it all. I'm not even sure throughout this writing process that this draft will make it. Yet for all, all this unforeseen stress and the panic of trying to write something that sounds good, I've remained proud and grateful. We've all heard and experienced how hard this year was going to be not just for school or trying to get into college, but for our collective lives. I remember watching last year's graduation in late July on these very same practice fields, really heartbroken for the class of 2020 not being able to celebrate and enjoy the last few months to get they had together. Going into this year, we all had to walk one way in order to go to class and to be sectioned off by pixie glass during lunch. Out of all the things I thought COVID-19 would do to our year, I never thought that I would be sharing some of the similar feelings I had in the beginning of my freshman year. Alone, confused, afraid. There were times I would be scrambling to find somebody at lunch or during free time that I could sit with, trying to communicate with people who I haven't seen in months now through a Zoom call was frustrating. As helpless as that seemed, I've remained proud and grateful. One of my favorite stories that I love telling for some odd reason in my freshman year is my freshman declamation. For those who don't know, in the second semester of our freshman year, we'd read the Odyssey. And towards the end of the reading, we would recite lines in front of our class in a friendly competition. Somehow, some way, I made it to the final round where I got to present in front of you all, the class of 2020. Now, I barely remember if I'd have claimed my part directly. But I vividly remember not only how I felt, but how I acted. My stage fright was so potent that my knees were shaking and buckling. I was told not to walk around and act like I was musing, but the only thing to stop the buckling was to move. My knees shaked so badly that the little quarters and dimes in my pockets were rattling. So loud, in fact, that my friend in the farthest row could hear. In fact, I'm still doing it now. I felt utterly embarrassed but glad because I never wanted to experience it again. But here I am now speaking to the same class, but now in front of my family, teachers, faculty, and staff. Yet again, throughout every single element that makes me anxious or distraught, I am proud and grateful. Throughout these four years, I've learned that every experience, good, bad, or those in between, are monumental in our development and maturity. As embarrassing or exciting these experiences might be, I've learned to become grateful and proud because without them, I wouldn't be who I am. It may not feel like a lot, but we accomplished so much. Don't ever forget. We got into college. We finished high school in the middle of a pandemic. We somehow managed to wake up every morning and make it through each day. Be proud of yourself, please, because whether you notice it or not, that is a great accomplishment. Be proud of your commitment to clubs, sports, plays, and other extracurricular activities. Be proud of each essay you've written, whether it was planned out weeks ahead or done 10 minutes before class. Be proud that we're days away from hearing our names getting called up and receiving our diploma. Our accomplishments, however small you may think they may be, can never be taken away from us. 
In tonight's reading of St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, Paul wrote to live in love. In order to be proud or to be grateful, it is essential to have a certain fondness or love of what we do, what we are. We have lived in love here at BC High for each accomplishment, whether we know it or not. For each class we've taken, tests, discussion, project, we have brought a willingness to indulge in love and to be heard by others. We have lived in love beyond our screens in our classroom. Each play, concert, sporting event that we attended or participated in, each club we showed up to early in the morning or right after school. We have lived and loved in the chapel, on retreat, around downtown crossing on St. Louis, in Charlestown on Mother Teresa, in the DR, Tanzania, and throughout the globe. Our love has shown perseverance in trying times, in mourning or in loneliness, through illness and reckoning. We continue to live in love with those sitting next to us in this very space. As we all begin to part ways and enter into our next chapter in our lives, I implore you to continue to be proud of who you are, to be grateful of your accomplishments. Be good to yourself. Be loving. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. Thank you. Now, how many of you remember what you heard today? Just remember this, the Lord is with you. May Almighty God continue to bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Go Eagles! Excuse me, please be seated momentarily. Thank you. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Just before you head off, I want to say a sincere thank you to Father McMillan for celebrating Mass this evening, to Father Reiki, Father Boyle, our own Father Krogan, Father Nolan, Father Perry, Father Predmore and Father Sparks for celebrating this beautiful Mass. Thank you to staff from Campus Ministry for their clearly thoughtful preparation. I want to thank Ms June Maddy for her presence here this evening, representing the Board of Trustees. Thank you for your presence and thank you for all you do for our school. Khalil, you remain proud and grateful this year. Please know that we could not be more proud and more grateful for you. You remind us tonight, as you do every day through your presence in our school, of who we are. Father McMillan, in his homily this evening, talked about the importance of asking, who am I? In my role as principal of this school, it's my responsibility to constantly ask myself who we are. And this is who we are. On this stunning evening, 
in this sacred space. It is impossible not to feel the presence of Christ. And what I ask is that we don't lose him over the next few days. We know how easy that is to do. But we feel his presence tomorrow at graduation rehearsal and here on Saturday amongst us as you do receive your diplomas. Father Sosa, the Superior General of the Society of Jesus, has challenged us in this at the beginning of our Ignatian year to see all new things through Christ. I can't think of a more symbolic moment to start that year in the presence of Christ with our graduating class of 2021. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your presence this evening and over your time at BC High. Go gently, safe home, and we'll see you tomorrow for graduation rehearsal at 10am. God bless.